Dear students, welcome to Nana Taranga. CET and NEET classes conducted by Department of Pre-University, Karnataka. I am Prakash Kumar. In this session, I will discuss some questions related to the first two chapters of second PUC. Chapter 1, Reproduction in Flowering Plants and Chapter 2, Reproduction, uh, sorry, Chapter 1, Reproduction in Organisms, Chapter 2, Reproduction in Flowering Plants. See, when you turn the pages, your Chapter 1 starts with the definition for lifespan. As you know, lifespan is the period from birth to natural death of an organism. See, there are organisms like uh, bacteria and plasmodium for which you cannot mention the lifespan because they are immortal. They do not die only. Naturally, they do not die, but you can kill by using some chemicals also. But naturally, they do not have any lifespan. Anyway, in this uh, first chapter, we discuss about the definition of lifespan lifespan and the three phases of uh, life cycle that is uh, juvenile phase, reproductive phase and senescent phase. Then we also discuss about uh, types of uh, reproduction, asexual and sexual reproduction. We talk about uh, different asexual reproductive structures found in organisms. Then we talk about vegetative propagules in plants. Then we talk about different stages of fertilization in sexually reproducting individuals which includes pre-fertilization events in organisms like gametogenesis and gamete transfer, fertilization events that includes external and internal fertilization and also formation of the zygote and post-fertilization events which includes the development of the zygote and also embryogenesis. See, when you look into the lifespan, see to answer certain questions on the lifespan, you need to know about the lifespan of uh, the organisms. See, as you know, it is very difficult to recall the names of uh, lifespan of all the organisms, at least you have to prepare for the lifespan of the organisms which are given in your NCRT book. So, let me start with the first question. Match the animals in column 1 with their lifespan in column 2 and choose the correct option. See, in column 1, the animals are given in column 2, lifespans are given. So, you should know about the lifespan of the organisms, then only this question can be easily answered. See, crow Crow has the lifespan of 15 years. Next, parrot. Parrot has the maximum lifespan that is around 150 years. Then, crocodile has 60 years. Dog is having 20 years, whereas elephant is around 65 to 90 years. So, this is a match the type following type of question. Therefore, the answer for this question is the D. This question can also be asked in the other way. So, let us look into the second question. So, select the option which correctly arranges the given organisms in ascending order of their lifespan. See, here I have given different plants as well as the insects and also the animals where you need to and all these are those which are there in your NCRT book. So, for which you need to know about the lifespan of these organisms, then this question can be easily answered. See, banana plant has a lifespan of 2 to 3 years, rice plant has 3 to 7 months, banyan tree has more than 70 years, 700 years sorry, fruit fly has 20 to 30 days, butterfly has 7 to 15 days, crow has 15 years, parrot 150, tata is 140, elephant 65, lion is 25, ostrich 50, crocodile 60. But here the question says, arrange the organisms in the ascending order, so that is from least to the highest. Therefore, lion has 25, ostrich 50, crocodile 60. Therefore, the answer is the D. Suppose if the question is asked in the descending order, that is from highest to least, then your answer should be the C if it is descending order. If it is ascending order, then your answer should be the D. So, D for uh, the ascending order, C for the descending order. Third question, say as 1.1 we study about uh, asexual reproduction. To answer this question, you need to know about the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. So, out of these four options, one of the option is wrong. So, which of the following option is incorrect or wrong with respect to the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction? So, first option asexual reproduction uniparental whereas sexual reproduction uniparental or biparental see when you consider uniparental 
it is also possible because in case of hermaphrodites, the sexual reproduction may take place. Monoecious or hermaphrodite, therefore, it can be uniparental or biparental. Somatic cells are involved, germ cells are involved, this is also correct. Offsprings are genetically similar to pl plants and they are similar, so which can be called as clones here. Offsprings are genetically dissimilar to the parents because the genetic recombination takes place during the gamete formation during meiosis, therefore all the three statements are correct. The rate of reproduction is slow here, see this is the wrong thing, it should be faster, asexual reproduction is faster whereas the rate of reproduction in sexual reproduction is slow because the organism starts to grow, mature, it has to produce the gametes, therefore it takes more time. Therefore, with respect to the question, the answer is 4, it is the incorrect statement. We shall move on to the next question. Match the items in column 1 with the column 2 and choose the correct option. In column 1, various asexual reproductive structures are given. In column 2, various organisms are given. See, to answer these type of questions, so you need to know about the asexual reproductive structures, not just which are given only in your uh, second PUC, you need to have the link with the first PUC topics also. So, it is chapter 2 and 3, where we discuss about the asexual reproductive structures of uh, plants and even the lower organisms, which you need to know. See, when it comes to binary fission, see binary fission is a process where a parental cell divides to produce two daughter cells, which are similar, similar cells. Binary fission, the more common type of binary fission in amoeba is a binary fission when the conditions are favorable. But when the conditions are unfavorable, the amoeba goes for multiple fission, it goes for encystation followed by the sporulation that is multiple fission. And with respect to the binary fission, in euglena, euglena undergoes longitudinal fission, whereas in paramecium it undergoes transverse binary fission. In planaria, multiple transverse fission can also be seen. But here, binary fission goes with the amoeba. Whereas zoospores, zoospores are the motile spores mainly produced in the lower organisms like algae. So, in Chlamydomonas, we can come out with uh, zoospores. So, zoospores for algae, these are motile flagellated spores which are endogenous in origin, they are produced inside. Conidia, conidia are the asexual reproductive structures found in fungi, particularly the ascomycetes and also the deuteromycetes the conidia are the reproductive structures, therefore conidia goes with the uh, pencilium which is an ascomycete. Then budding, budding can be seen in case of hydra, budding is also a type of reproduction, asexual reproduction even in the east. Then gemules, gemules are also called as internal buds which goes with the sponge, therefore the answer is, so A with 2, A with 2, this is A, then B with 1, then conidia, pencilium, that is C, then budding, D, gemules, that is E. So, it should be B A D C E, 1, so, the answer is 2. So, you shall move on to the next question. See here, I have mixed some of the options from your first PUC. Match the column 1 with the column 2 and select the correct option from the following. Sporangiospores, sporangiospores can be seen in case of the phycomycetes like rhizopus. So, A goes with the 2. So, A goes with the 2. So, is the B is the answer. Zoospore and algae like Eulothrix. Conidia, you already know, Conidia can be seen in Pencilium, belongs to Ascomycetes and also Deuteromycetes. Multiple fission can be seen in Planaria. Sorry. Okay, question number 5. Match the column 1 with the column 2 and select the correct option from the following options. In column 1, different asexual reproductive structures are given. In column 2, the organisms are given. Sporangiospores, sporangiospores are the asexual spores found in phycomycetes, a fungi 
So one of the example for phycomycetes is rhizopus, therefore sporangiospore go with the rhizopus. Zoospores which I already discussed in the previous slide, these are motile endogenous spores which are very common in algae. So one of the example of algae is eulothrix here, therefore zoospore goes with the eulothrix. Conidia are immotile spores which are formed in penicillium which belongs to ascomycetes and even in deutromycetes the asexual reproduction takes place by conidia where you do not find sexual reproduction therefore uh, deutromycetes are also called as a fungi imperfecti. So conidia goes with the penicillium. Multiple fission, so multiple fission can be seen in case of uh, amoeba and also in plasmodium. So when the conditions are not favorable, so amoeba goes for uh, the multiple fission. So encystation occurs followed by the sporulation and even in plasmodium, so erythrocytic schizogony and also hepatocyte schizogony which are multiple fission, therefore multiple fission can be seen in plasmodium, you can also see multiple fission in amoeba, in amoeba. Then regeneration, a regeneration can be seen in planaria which belongs to a flatworms that is platyhelminthes. See planaria, even when a planaria body is cut into fragments, each fragment may develop into a new planaria, so which is called as morpholaxis. So when a cut part can be developed into a complete organism, we call it as morpholaxis. Suppose if a last part is regenerated, only if the last part is regenerated, it is called as epimorphosis. Epimorphosis is a condition where the last part is regenerated, morpholaxis is a condition where the fragment will develop into a complete organism. Therefore, for this question, the answer is B. We shall move on to the next question. Which of the following statement is incorrect? Basidiospores are sexual spores. Basidiospores are the sexual spores produced by the basidiomycetes. As you know, in basidiomycetes and ascomycetes, the plasmogamy and the karyogamy are the special features. In ascomycetes, the ascospores are the sexual spores. In basidiomycetes, basidiospores are the sexual spores. Therefore, the first statement is correct. Zygospores are sexual spores. Of course, zygospores are the sexual spores which are formed by the fusion of gametes, characteristic of phycomycetes. Therefore, even this statement is also correct. A planospores are asexual spores. Of course, the planospores are asexual spores find in the phycomycetes. Therefore, all these three statements are correct. But which one of the statement is incorrect? The incorrect statement is zoospores are sexual spores. Actually, these are not sexual spores. These are asexual spores found in algae. So, they are asexual spores, zoospores. Therefore, with respect to the above question, the answer is D. So, D is the answer. We shall move on to the next question. Which of the following pairs of asexual reproductive structures found in animals? So, you need to concentrate on the question. It is only in the animals. Conidia, conidia can be seen in fungi. Birds can be seen in hydra, of course. Birds can be seen in animals, even in uh, hydra and also in sponges, internal birds. But here, conidia can be seen in plants. Therefore, this cannot be the option. Birds and gemmules. So, gemmules are the internal birds found in the sponges, the animals. Birds in hydra. Therefore, these two structures are found in animals. That should be the answer. Zoospores, again in lower algae, again gemmules and zoospores. Zoospores, zoospores comes under algae. Therefore, the structures that can be seen only in animals are birds and gemmules. Therefore, the answer is birds and gemmules. Next question. Which of the following vegetative propagules are found in agave and water hyacinth plants respectively? See here, as an example I have given uh, for agave and water hyacinth where you need to know about all vegetative propagules of the organism which are given in your book. So, bulbil, so bulbil is a vegetative propagule of agave, correct. But runner can be a vegetative propagule of grasses and even gladiolus and oxalis. So, it is not a vegetative propagule of water hyacinth. Offset, offset for water hyacinth, bulbil for agave. See here, agave and water hyacinth you have to write respectively. Therefore, agave it should be bulbil, water hyacinth offset. So, this is the correct answer. Sucker can be seen in chrysanthemum. Therefore, for this question, 
the correct option is C that is bulbil and offset. We shall move on to the next question. Here I have given the diagrams, you have to choose the correct option. See this is a potato, potato is a modified shoot which grow by the growth of the buds, therefore it is a tuber. So, in the given four options, A and D has the tuber, let us see the second one, second one is the ginger, it is a rhizome. So, tuber and rhizome, these two are correct, stolen cannot be the correct answer, therefore the answer has to be the D, then this is again bulbil correct. So, epiphyllous blood in bryophyllum, leaf buds correct, this is water hyacinth, offset correct, therefore the answer is the D, D is the answer, D is the answer. Next question, what will be the chromosome number in the endosperm of composite flowering plant developed by grafting if stock and cion having chromosome number 20 and 30 respectively. During the process of grafting, you have to select a plant which can absorb the better nutrients which can be called as the stock and the good quality plant which you transfer is called as the graft or you can call it as cyan. In the question, the stock has 20 chromosomes, this is the 2n number, whereas the graft has 30, so 2n number is 30. Always the characteristic of the fruit or the flower depends on the cyan, not the stock. Stock will provide only the nourishment, but the genetic property of the fruits and flowers depends on the cyan. Here the question is endosperm, endosperm is triploid, the 2a number is 30, therefore 3n should be 45, 45 should be the answer, therefore here the answer is C that is 45. We shall move on to the next question. In which of the following pairs of animals does the process of menstrual cycle occur? See menstruation is the cyclical changes that occur in ovaries, ovarian cycle we call and in accessory reproductive duct, the mainly in the uterus which we call it as uterine cycle, in the reproductive system of female primates is called as menstrual cycle which you do not find in non-primates. So, here cow and rats, they are not primates, therefore menstrual cycle cannot be seen in cows and rats where we make out Easter cycle. Apes, ape is a primate but dog is not a primate, dogs and cows are non-primates, monkey and apes are the primates, therefore the menstrual cycle should occur in monkeys and apes. In Easter cycle, we classify the organisms into monistrous, diesterous and polyesterous. So, monistrous organisms are the deers which show single Easter cycle in a year, whereas dogs show two Easter cycles which are diesterous cycle, whereas rats or mouse show polyesterous cycle. With respect to the above question, menstrual cycle is occurring in monkeys and apes. We will move on to the next question. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the event that takes place during sexual reproduction? Say, as you know, the events of sexual reproduction can be classified into pre-fertilization events, fertilization events and post-fertilization events. Pre-fertilization events includes gamete formation and gamete transfer. Fertilization events includes the formation of zygote during the external and internal fertilization. Post-fertilization events includes the zygote development and embryogenesis. Here the first option says during post fertilization events gamete and zygote formation takes place. So, during the post fertilization events it is not the formation of the zygote, it is the development of the zygote, gamete formation takes place during the pre fertilization events, therefore this statement is wrong. During pre fertilization events formation and transfer of gametes occur, so this is the correct statement. Third option during pre fertilization event the zygote formation, zygote formation cannot, is not a pre-fertilization event, therefore this is wrong. During post-fertilization events, transfer of gamete, transfer of gamete is also a pre-fertilization event, therefore this statement is wrong, therefore the answer for this question is D, during pre-fertilization event, the formation of gametes and the transfer of gametes takes place. We will move on to the next question. Arrange the following 
in the increasing order of chromosome number in meiocytes. See, meiocyte is always a diploid cell that produces the gametes by the process of meiosis. See, humans, as you know, the 2n number, human there is 46. 46 is the 2n number in case of human beings. Housefly, housefly has 12 chromosomes, whereas rat has around 42 chromosomes, butterfly has 380 chromosomes, dog has around 78 chromosomes. So, 46, 12, 42, 380, 70. Here the question is increasing order. Increasing order means least to highest. That is ascending order. So, increasing order can also be called as ascending order. Therefore, first one is ascending least to highest. So, B that is 12, after 12 what, what it do? That is C, after that A, after that E, after that D. So, B, C, A, E, D. Therefore, the answer for this question is A. Suppose if the question is in the descending order, then your answer should be D, A, C, B, D, A, C, B if the question is descending order. So, for this question, the answer is A. We shall move on to the next question. Write the following organisms in the ascending order based on the number of chromosomes present in their meiocytes. So, it is an other way of asking the same question. So, for, to answer this question, you need to know about the chromosome number in the meiocyte of all these organisms. See, apple has around uh, 34 chromosomes. So, I will take it once again. Slide with the apple as the chromosome number 34, rice has the chromosome number 24, maize has the chromosome number 20, this is a diploid number, housefly has the chromosome number 12, fruit fly has the chromosome number 8, butterfly has the chromosome number 380, cat has the chromosome number 38, rat has the chromosome number 42. Dog has the chromosome number 78, whereas onion, the diploid number is 16, but in the old NCRT books, the haploid number is given as 16, but actually it is a diploid number is 16, haploid number is 8. Ophioglasm is the highest, a fern with the 1260 chromosomes, diploid number, potato 48. So, when you look into this, so, you have to write the ascending order that is least to the highest. So, cat 38, rat 42, 78 highest. Therefore, for this question, the correct answer is the C, cat, rat and dog. We shall move on to the next question. So, here I have given the lifespan, I mean uh, sorry, myocyte uh, number for uh, different organisms. Next slide. The isogametes are produced in isogametes are also called as homogametes where sperm and the egg look alike, they are similar. So, the gametes can be classified into isogametes where sperm and the egg cannot be differentiated which are similar. They can be classified into anisogametes where sperm is smaller, egg is larger. In their shape both are spherical, both are immotile, but the egg is larger, sperm is small. U gametes, in U gametes they are totally different. The sperm and the egg are totally different. The sperm is active, egg is inactive, sperm is motile, egg is immotile. The fusion of these isogametes is called as isogamy. The fusion of anisogametes is called as anisogamy and the fusion of U gametes is called as U gamy. So, which can be seen in higher plants and animals. See isogametes, so in fucus, it is ugami, spirogaira, it is isogamy, kara ugami, bryophytes ugami. Therefore, isogametes can be seen in spirogaira. Therefore, the answer is spirogaira. Next question Which of the following statement is incorrect? Cladophora produces homogametes. See, cladophora and even chlamydomonas produce homogametes. Homogametes are also called as isogametes. Therefore, this is the correct statement. 
Neelakuranji will flower in October and September 2018. So, that is uh, the next month. So, you have all uh, possibilities if you go to the hilly regions of uh, the Kerala and uh, hilly regions of uh, Tamil Nadu and even Karnataka, you can uh, see the flowers which bloom in the next month, October and September 2018. Because Neula Karanji is a, a perennial polycarpic plant which produces the flowers once in 12 years. Last time it flowered in the year 2006. Therefore, this is also the correct statement. See, all annuals and biennials are monocarpic because they produce flowers only once in their lifetime. But perennial plants can be monocarpic or polycarpic. Bamboo is a perennial plant which produces flowers only once. Therefore, it is a perennial monocarpic plant. But Neela Kuranji is a perennial polycarpic but flowers once in 12 years. Therefore, the second option is correct. The gamete production in plants takes place only by mitosis. As you know, in case of plants, we come across two types of generation, sporophytic generation and gametophytic generation. So, sporophyte is diploid, gametophyte is haploid. Gametophyte is the one that produces the gametes. So, when the gametophyte is haploid, gametes are also haploid. Therefore, it has to be mitosis. Sporophyte is diploid, sporophyte is diploid. Therefore, it will not produce gametes. It produces only the spores. So, sporophyte produces the spores which are haploid. This is by the meiosis. Therefore, in plants, spore production takes place by meiosis, but gamete production takes place by mitosis. Therefore, the gamete production in plant takes place only by mitosis, not by meiosis. But in case of honeybee, if queen bee is deployed, because in sexual termination, honeybee is haplodiploid. Queen bee is deployed, therefore, it produces the gametes by meiosis, but drones, the males, which are haploid, where they produce the gametes by mitosis. So, in honeybee, we can see the gamete production both by mitosis as well as in meiosis, but in all plants, gamete production takes place by mitosis. Therefore, all these three statements are correct, but the question says which is the incorrect statement. External fertilization is seen in cartilaginous fishes. External fertilization is a characteristic of some amphibians and bony fishes, not cartilaginous fishes. In cartilaginous fishes, it is internal fertilization. Sharks have a special copulatory organs, so claspers to deposit their sperms into the genital tract of the female. Therefore, in cartilaginous fissures, it should be not external, it is internal fertilization. Therefore, the incorrect statement is D. D is the incorrect statement. We shall move on to the next question. Identify the option with correct labeling for A, B, C and D in the following diagram. See, to answer these type of questions, you need to be thorough with the diagrams. You need to be thorough with all the diagrams there in your textbook, both first PUC and second PUC textbook. See, A, see here the A represents the testes. As you know, it is a reproductive system of the earthworm, which has both ovaries and the testes, it is a hermaphrodite. Though the earthworm is a hermaphrodite, having both testes and the ovaries, it will not show self-fertilization. It goes only for cross-fertilization because testes mature earlier than the ovaries, protandry condition. Therefore, it fertilizes only by cross fertilization, not by self fertilization. So, A is the testes, A is the testes. B, it is a section of the cockroach. So, cockroach exhibits sexual dimorphism. So, sexes are separate. So, this is the structure of ovaries, ovaries. Then third one, so here the Markensia, here this is antheridiophore. Antheridiophore will be having irregular boundary. See in the diagram, archegoniophore having a, a circular, a neat boundary where you can easily distinguish. This is the antheridiophore of Markensia. Last diagram is the Cara. D is the Ugonium. D is the Ugonium. You can also call it as nucule the female reproductive part, whereas this is the male reproductive part called as antheridium or antheridiophore, antheridiophore, which is globular in shape is also called as globule. So, 
the option A is testis, A is testis here, B is ovary, B is ovary and this is anthridiophore, not archegoniophore, then this is oogonium, oogonium can also be called as nucule. Therefore, the correct option is the D. Next question. So, D is the correct answer. Next question. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the haplontic life cycle? Haplontic life cycle, so this can be seen only in case of the lower organisms like algae and fungi. In haplontic life cycle, there is a male which is haploid gametophyte, a female gametophyte, both are haploid, they produce the gametes by mitosis. Of course, in all plants, the gamete production takes place by mitosis, which are haploid. When these two fuse, you will get a diploid zygote. But here, as there is alternation of generation, zygote can be considered as a sporophyte. It will not develop into a sporophyte. This undergoes meiosis. So, zygotic meiosis is a characteristic of the organisms that exhibit haploid life cycle like Volvox, Chlamydomonas, Pyrogera, etc. And this undergoes meiosis to produce the haploid spores which develops into gametophyte. Therefore, here the diploid is restricted only to the zygote and all major stages are haploid. Therefore, it is called as haplontic life cycle. Zygote divides mitotically. No, zygote is dividing meiotically. Therefore, this cannot be the right statement. Zygote divides meiotically to parum diploid spores, but here actually the spores are haploid, therefore this is the wrong statement. Zygote divides meiotically to form haploid spores, this is correct statement. Zygote divides mitotically, you know it is by meiosis, therefore the correct answer is the C. Next question, the life cycle of algae and fungi is haplontic, naturally their plant body is haploid. Which of the following statements is correct regarding haplontic life cycle? So, in the previous question, I have explained that the algae and fungi are haploid, therefore they produce the gametes by mitosis and the resulting zygote undergoes meiosis. Adult is diploid, no it cannot be diploid. Adult is haploid shows gametic meiosis, so gametes will not undergo meiosis, therefore wrong. Adult is diploid, wrong. Adult is haploid and shows zygotic meiosis, so this is the correct statement, therefore the answer is D. We shall move on to the next question. Zygotic meiosis is seen in, zygotic meiosis can be seen only in the organisms that exhibit haplontic life cycle. So, I already told you, Volvox and even Chlamydomonas and even in Spirogyra. These are the organisms which exhibit haplontic life cycle. Therefore, zygotic meiosis is seen in Volvox, Chlamydomonas, Spirogyra. Gymnosperm shows haplodiplontic life cycle because, uh, so in, sorry, in gymnosperms and angiosperms it is diplontic, sorry. So, gymnosperms and angiosperms diplontic life cycle because the haploidy condition is restricted only to the male and female gametophyte that is pollen grain and embryo sac. In gymnosperms it is endosperm. Ectocarpus, ectocarpus is an algae which shows haplodiplontic life cycle. A very rare thing, algae can exhibit haplontic life cycle, diplontic life cycle and also haplodiplontic life cycle. See Volvox, Clamyromus, Spinogyra, so these are the algae which exhibit haplontic life cycle. Ectocarpus is the algae which exhibit haplodiplontic life cycle. Fucus, Fucus is a algae, a green algae which exhibit diplontic life cycle. Actually this is taken from, from your first PUC. But with respect to this question, zygotic meiosis, that is only in Volvox, Clamyromus and Spirogyra. Therefore, the answer is Volvox. Next question. The heterothallic and dioecious condition is not used to describe. Hetero means different, different thallus. So, th what is thallus? Thallus is a plant body which is not differentiated into root, stem and leaf. So, it is a characteristic of lower organs, thallophytes, algae, fungi, lichens. So, lichen is a composition of algae and fungi. So, here the body is thalloid, thallus body where the root, stem and leaf are not distinguished. Heterothallic, hetero means different. One is male thallus, other one is female thallus, therefore unisexuality condition. 
and dioecious. Dioecious where the sexes are separate. So, heterothallic dioecious applies to both of them applies to unisexual condition. Let us go to the options. Staminate flowers. These are the male flowers. Male flowers, of course, they are unisexual. Pistillate flowers. These are the female flowers. Of course, they are unisexual. Unisexual condition, that is also correct. So, heterothallic and dioecious condition can be used for staminate, pistillate and unisexual flowers, but not used. It cannot be used for bisexual condition. Therefore, the answer is bisexual condition. The heterothallic and dioecious condition cannot be bisexual. It is unisexual. Next question. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the bisexual and unisexual condition in plants? Heterothallic. So, heterothallic means unisexual. Dioecious is also unisexual. Terms are used to describe bisexual condition. Therefore, it is wrong because these two terms for unisexual condition. Heterothallic, unisexual, monoecious. See, monoecious is a condition where the plant has both male and female. Plant is bisexual. So, in monoecious, you will find male and female. Plant is bisexual. Heterothallic is unisexual, but monoecious bisexual, but it is used for unisexual, it cannot be the answer. Homothallic and dioecious. Homothallic where male and female structures are present on the same, so it is bisexual. Dioecious, it is unisexual, so unisexual is applicable only for dioecious, but not for homothallic. Homothallic, bisexual condition, unisexual, monoecious also bisexual condition, so, this is for bisexual, this is for bisexual with respect to the plant. Therefore, homothallic and monoecious terms can be used for the bisexual condition. Therefore, the answer is D. The difference between bisexual flower, C, in case of monoecious plant, they have male flowers and also female flowers on separate branches. It is monoecious. Bisexual flower is the one which is having both stamens and pistil in the same flower. But with respect to the question, homothallic and monoecious go with the bisexual condition of the plant, not the flower. Therefore, this is the correct answer. Next option, sorry, next question. Which of the following organism is not hermaphrodite? Hermaphrodite is the organism which has testes and ovaries in the same organism. Generally, we use the term hermaphrodite and homophrodite for the animals. For plants, we use the terms monoecious, dioecious, bisexual, unisexual, etc. See, leech is a organism which is hermaphrodite, having both male and female structures. Earthworm also has a hermaphrodite which has both male and female structures, which can show only cross-pollination but not self-pollination. So, tapeworm is a parasite in the intestine, which is also having both testes and the ovaries. Therefore, all these three are hermaphrodite. But the question says, is not a hermaphrodite. So, cockroach is not a hermaphrodite. So, cockroach is a homophrodite, where it exhibits sexual dimorphism, sexual dimorphism, where males are characterized by the presence of the anal styles which you do not find in a female cockroach. There are so many other differences also. So, with respect to the question, cockroach is not a hermaphrodite, therefore, the answer is cockroach. Move on to the next question. Select the odd one with respect to the post fertilization events. So, what happens after the fertilization in case of plants? Ovule develops into a seed, of course, ovule develops into a seed, correct. Integuments become seed coats, namely the testa and tegmen. Outer integument become testa, inner integument tegmen, that is also correct. Functional megaspore develops into embryo sac. It is not a post fertilization change, it, is, it occurs before fertilization. Zygote develops into embryo. C, option A, C and D are the events which takes place after post fertilization. But integuments develop, sorry, A, B and D, functional megaspore, it is not a post fertilization event. Therefore, the odd one in this is the third option, functional megaspore into embryo sac. We shall move on to the next question. Development of fruit without fertilization is called apomixis. Apomixis is also called as A gamospermy. A gamospermy. It is nothing but asexual reproduction which is characterized by 
non fusion of the gametes a gamospermy or you can call it as asexual reproduction no problem amphimixis it is nothing but the sexual reproduction where the pro nucleus of the sperm fuses with the pro nucleus of the egg to form a sync carrion a zygotic nucleus which is called as amphimixis so it is a sexual reproduction fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygotic nucleus parthenocarpy carpel is a part of uh, the pistil parthenocarpy it is a process where a fruit developed from unfertilized ovary development of fruit without fertilization is called parthenocarpy so this is the correct option answer for the given question what is parthenogenesis it is the development of unfertilized egg unfertilized egg into an individual generally you get confused between these two parthenocarpy and parthenogenesis parthenocarpy is development of unfertilized ovary into a fruit is parthenocarpy whereas unfertilized egg develops into an individual like example drones drones are developed from unfertilized eggs you can use the term parthenodes parthenodes are the organisms which are developed from unfertilized egg therefore the development of fruit without fertilization is called parthenocarpy the answer is parthenocarpy next question animals that do not give birth to young ones as you know the animals are classified into oviparous viviparous and ovo oviparous oviparous animals are those which lay eggs viviparous animals are those which give birth give birth to young ones but here the mother provide nourishment in the womb in ovo viviparous they give birth to young ones but after the birth the mother is not providing any nourishment so sorry in ovo viviparous animal they are giving birth to the young ones but the developing embryo depends on the food which is stored in the egg already here the mother is not directly providing any nourishment when it is inside the body therefore we call it as ovo viviparous animals see peripatus shark they comes under ovo viviparous animals so both viviparous and ovo viviparous animals give birth to young ones animals that do not give birth to young ones are it is only O V paras they give birth to young ones, O V paras give birth to young ones. The both B and C give birth to young ones. Therefore, those which do not give birth to young ones are O V paras animals. Therefore, the answer is O V paras. So, with this, the break, sir. You can just raise your hand. Next topic is sexual reproduction in uh, flowering plants. In this topic, we talk about the flower. a modified uh, shoot for uh, sexual reproduction so we talk about uh, different parts of the flower structure of stamen that is microsporophyll then microsporangium that is a pollen sac and the pollen grain a male gametophyte we talk about the formation of pollen grain and our microsporogenesis then we talk about the different parts of the pistil then megasporangium structure of ovule and also the embryo we talk about uh, megasporogenesis and you need to know about the differences between microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis once the spore, pollen grain and the egg are formed then we talk about the pollination and the type of uh, pollination autogamy allogamy xenogamy gynogamy etc then you need to know about the inbreeding and outbreeding devices the devices that helps in self pollination and also the devices that helps in the cross pollination or the devices which favor only cross pollination then we talk about artificial hybridization to obtain the plants with the desired characteristics then a double fertilization which is a characteristic of uh, only angiosperms then we talk about the embryo both monocot and dicot embryo formation of seed and the fruit and an important topic like uh, apomixis and uh, polyembryony so these are the some of the topics which we study under the chapter 2 so we'll go by the questions first question in flowering plants archisporium 
gives rise to? There are four options, wall of sporangium, wall and sporogenous tissue, tapetum and sporogenous tissue, tapetum and endothesium. See, there is an outermost layer called epidermis. Below the epidermis, there is a hypodermal cell called archisporium, archisporial cell. So, these are diploid cells, a sporophyte. Archisporial cell divides to produce a primary parietal cell and primary sporogenous cell. Primary parietal cell is the one which gives rise to the layers endothesium of anther wall, middle layers and the tapetum. Therefore, the anther wall is formed by primary parietal cell of the archisporium, whereas primary sporogenous tissue produces, sporogenous cell produces sporogenous tissue. Sporogenous tissue cells differentiate into pollen mother cell or you can call it as microspore mother cell. Generally, we use the term MMC for megaspore mother cell in order to avoid confusion for microspore mother cell, we use the term pollen mother cell, where each pollen mother cell, pollen mother cell which is deployed, which undergoes first meiosis 1 to produce a pollen dyad, haploid cells. Pollen dyad undergoes meiosis 2, second meiosis together called meiosis to produce a pollen tetrad. The pollen tetrad, the cells separate to form the microspores and this process is called microsporogenesis which is produced from the primary sporogenous cell. Here the archisporium gives rise to the wall and also the sporogenous tissue. Therefore, the answer is the B. Next question. The anther wall consists of four wall layers where, see if you take the anther wall, the outermost layer is the epidermis, a protective layer. Then the second layer is endothesium which has radially elongated cells with hygroscopic uh, lateral walls which absorb water and the middle layer of cells which store the foot and the last uh, layer the tapetum and all this is sporophyte therefore here the cells are 2n, cells are 2n, cells are 2n. But in the tapetum because of endopolyploidy the cells may have many nucleus 2n, 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 2n. So, outermost layer epidermis then we have endothesium, middle layer of cells, tapetum. These four forms the anther wall. Endothesium lies inner to middle layer. Endothesium lies to epidermis, not inner to middle layer. Therefore, this is a wrong statement. Tapetum lies just inner to the endothesium. This is endothesium and after endothesium, there is a middle layer. Therefore, this is a wrong statement. Tapetum lies next to epidermis. Tapetum is the innermost layer. Therefore, this is also a wrong statement. Middle layers, middle layer lie between endothesium and tapetum. Therefore, the correct option is D. Next question. Which of the following is wrongly paired with respect to the ploidy? Antipodal cells. Say antipodal cells are the cells which are found in embryo sac just opposite to the egg apparatus having egg cell and egg cells are always associated with the synergids. In the center here, there are two polar nuclei, haploid cell, haploid cell, haploid, 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 all haploid cells. So, antipodal cells are haploid correct. Tapetal cell, tapetal cell is a part of sporophyte. Therefore, it exhibit endopolyploidy. Therefore, it should be 2n plus 2n plus 2n as I have shown in the previous slide. Then endothesium, endothesium cells are diploid correct. Polar nucleus is haploid correct. But here for the tapetum, the, it is given as n, n, n. Therefore, wrong one is the B. Tapetal cells are 2n, 2n, 2n because of endoploidy. It is not n, n, n. n, n, n can be seen in gametophyte, but tapetal cell belongs to the sporophyte which is diploid. Therefore, the answer is tapetal cell. Next question. Which sequence correctly represents the order of the structures that will form in the process of microsporogenesis? See, microsporogenesis is the formation of microspores from pollen mother cell. See, here we have the primary sporogenous tissue which give rise to 
pollen mother cell pollen mother cell undergo meiosis to produce pollen tetrad or microspore tetrad which separates to form microspores which develops into the pollen grains therefore the correct sequence is sporogenous tissue then pollen mother cell microspore tetrad then the pollen grain microspore and pollen grain therefore in the given option first option sporogenous tissue correct pollen mother cell microspore and pollen tetrad so the first option is correct but in the second it starts with the pollen grain wrong third one sporogenous tissue okay but microspore tetrad wrong fourth option pollen grain wrong therefore the correct answer is the first one next question the wall of the pollen grain is known as sporoderm the two layers of sporoderm are see pollen grain is called as male gametophyte because it produces male gametes pollen grain has two cells one is the generative cell which floats in the cytoplasm of vegetative cell vegetative cell it is covered by two layers the intine made up of pectocellulose and exine made up of a highly resistant chemical called sporopollenin and this can be asked very importantly intine and exine together constitutes the sporoderm therefore exine and intine is the answer integument and nucellus see integument see in uh, megasporangium or ovule there are outer two coverings called integuments then there is a nutritive tissue called nucellus within this there is a female gametophyte called embryo sac therefore integument and nucellus are the part of ovule also called megasporangium pericarp pericarp is the fruit wall perisperm it is a remnant of nucellus found in the seeds of uh, pepper and also beet therefore this cannot be the answer testa and tegmen outer integument once the ovule develops into a seed outer integument develops into testa inner integument develops into tegmen therefore testa and tegmen are the seed coats pericarp is a fruit wall perisperm is a remnant of nucellus therefore for the question the correct option is d exine and intine next question how many microspore mother cells will give rise to 512 gametes say as you know one pollen mother cell undergoes meiosis to produce a pollen tetrad to produce four microspores which develop into a two cell pollen grain and each pollen grain produces two gametes therefore one pollen mother cell can produce eight gametes but 512 gametes are produced from how many microspore mother cells therefore 512 divided by 8 so 8 six za then 8 four za therefore 512 male gametes are produced from 64 microspore mother cells if the question is from how many microspores then it should be divided by 2 therefore the answer is 64 next question there are 10 flowers in one individual plant of datura in each microsporangium of every stamen of all the flowers there are 20 microspore mother cells how many pollen grains are formed from that plant see 20 microspore mother cells 20 microspore mother cells and each microspore mother cell can produce four microspores therefore 80 microspores can be produced microspores and the flowers of datura are dithecus they have tetrasporangiate from one chamber 80 therefore for four chambers that is for one stamen 80 into 4 it is 320 microspores are produced from one stamen each flower has five stamens each flower has five stamens therefore 320 into 
phi 0, phi 2 is 10, 1, it is 1600 for 1 flower, but how many flowers? 10 flowers, therefore, 10 into 1600, it will be 16000 microspores. So, it will be 16000 microspores. If the question is how many gametes, suppose if the question is instead of microspores, if it is how many gametes, then again it should be multiplied by 2, so we will get 32,000 gametes. Therefore, for the given question, the answer is 16,000. Next question, how many meiosis and mitosis are required for the production of 10 male gametes from pollen mother cell respectively? One pollen mother cell undergo one meiosis to produce four microspores, each microspore undergo one mitosis to produce two cell pollen grain, again one more mitosis to produce two male gametes. So, one pollen mother cell to produce the two male gametes, two mitosis and one meiosis. To produce four gametes, four mitosis, one meiosis. To produce six, six mitosis, one meiosis. To produce eight, it should be eight mitosis and one meiosis. But here ten, therefore you have to go for one more pollen mother cell, which will also produce four microspores and this will produce two gametes. So, you will get 10 mitosis, but 1 meiosis here. Therefore, it should be 2 meiosis and 10 mitosis. Therefore, the answer is 2 and 10. A 2 pollen mother cells has to undergo 2 meiosis and even up to 16 also, only 2 meiosis. 16 gametes can be produced by, see number of gametes and number of meiosis are same. But meiosis up to 16, it is 2 meiosis. Suppose if it is 18, then you have to go for 3 meiosis. Therefore, the answer is B. Next question. The ploidy of endothesium, microspore mother cell, microspore and generative cell is. See, endothesium is a part of anther. It is sporophyte, therefore, it is diploid. Microspore mother cell, it is also diploid. Microspore, it is haploid. Generative cell is haploid. Therefore, it should be 2N, 2N, N, N. Therefore, the option B is correct. Next question. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the pollen grain? The outermost layer of pollen is exine, correct, which is made up of pectin. No, it is made up of sporopollenin. The innermost layer of pollen is intine, correct, which is made up of pectin. This is correct, pectin and cellulose. The outermost layer of pollen is intine, wrong. The innermost layer of pollen is exine, wrong. Therefore, the correct option is B. Next question. Carpels are modified. See, when we talk about a flower, flower is a modified shoot for the sexual reproduction. So, aerial shoot system, underground root system. Say, for example, here we have a, a branch having many leaves. This condenses. When it condenses, these are all the nodes. These leaves may form sepals, next leaves may form petals, next leaves may form the stamen next leaves may form the gynecium. So, here each orals of a flower are the modified leaves. These are all the modified leaves. Sepals are the modified leaves for protection again. Petals are the modified leaves to attract pollinators. Stamens are the modified leaves for the production of microspores. Therefore, stamen is also called as microsporo fill, fill means leaf, microspore producing leaf, whereas gynecium or we can call it the pistil, pistil is made up of gynecium or pistil is made up of one or many carpels. So, carpels are the units of gynecium. See, the outermost oral calyx, the units are sepals. Second oral corolla, the units are petals. These two together can be called as perian. In a homoclamidious flower, you cannot differentiate them, where we, the units of perianth are called as stepals. Whereas, carpel is meant for production of megaspore, therefore, it is also called as megasporophyll. Carpels are modified leaves, the answer is leaves. Next question, megasporophyll is, I already explained in the previous slide, 
megaspore megaspore producing leaf megaspore producing leaf is carpel see ovule ovule is called as mega sporangium whereas microsporangium microsporangium is pollen sac or pollen chamber then ovary carpel embryo sac embryo sac is a female gametophyte embryo sac is a female gametophyte of angiosperms but in gymnosperms female gametophyte is endosperm endosperm is female gametophyte in gymnosperms and it is haploid whereas male gametophyte is pollen grain in both gymnosperms and angiosperms therefore pollen grain is a male gametophyte in both angiosperms and gymnosperms because it produces male gametes but female gametophyte is embryo sac in angiosperms but in gymnosperms it is endosperm it is haploid pre fertilized product this is very important so for the given question the answer is c that is carpel next question the statement given below describes certain features that are observed in the pistil of a flower pistil is synonymous to gynoecium made up of one or many carpels pistil may produce more than one seed certainly it is correct each carpel may have more than one ovule so ovules are the ones which develop into seeds therefore each carpel can have many ovules each carpel has only one ovule so they may have one or many therefore this is a wrong statement pistil have only one carpel it can have one carpel when we call it as monocarpillary it may have many carpels multicarpillary if the carpels are fused we use the term syncarpus if they are free we call it as apocarpus therefore pistil can have many carpels therefore this is also wrong statement so here choose the statement that are true that are correct here the correct statements are only 1 and 2 therefore the answer is a next question identify the type of pistil in the diagram so when you look at this diagram here the carpels are fused it is multicarpillary syncarpus multicarpillary syncarpus pistil of it is papaver this diagram is multicarpillary syncarpus pistil of papaver so on the sides this is not included in the question on the side i have given another diagram here many carpels but here the carpels are not fused so it's a characteristic of michelia therefore if this is the diagram your answer should be this that is a but for the given question the answer is b next question which of the following embryo sac diagram is correctly labeled so to choose the correct one in the first one you first check the polar nucleus polar nuclei are in the center polar nuclei polar nuclei but here it is egg therefore this is wrong here it is synergid this is wrong now you have two options one and two egg is always associated with the synergids because synergids are characterized by the presence of filiform operators here but here egg is associated with the antipodal so this cannot be the answer therefore the correct answer is the two where egg is having synergids with the filiform operators and the cells which present towards the other end opposite to the egg operators that is towards the shallazal end they are antipodals therefore the correct diagram here is the b that is second one sorry then the formation of embryo sac the functional megaspore undergoes so this is the megasporangium with the outer integument and inner integument this is shellaza micropyle hilum the funicle attached to the placenta and here you have new cells the entire thing is sporophyte one of the cell towards the micropylar and differentiate into megaspore mother cell this divides meiotically to produce a linear tetrad of megaspores out of them the three will disappear and the remaining one is called as functional megaspore now this functional megaspore with a haploid nucleus undergoes 
first mitotic division to produce two nucleus which move to the opposite poles. Then second mitotic division to produce four nucleus, then third mitotic division to produce eight nucleus. So, totally there are three mitotic division takes place in the functional megaspore to produce eight nucleotide. Once the eight nucleus are formed, two nucleus move to the center to which are called as polar nuclei as they move from the poles and these three are called as antipodals, polar nuclei and here the egg apparatus having an XL and two synergids with the filiform apparatus. Therefore, a functional megaspore develops into a, a mature embryo sac by undergoing three mitotic division. Suppose if the question starts with a megaspore mother cell, then it should include one meiosis and three mitosis. Embryo sac from a, if the question is megaspore, instead of megaspore, functional megaspore, if it is megaspore mother cell, then answer should be one meiosis, three mitosis. For the given question, three mitotic division. Next question, the only cells that undergo meiotic division in angiosperms are, the only cells that undergo meiosis in angiosperms, flowering plants are spore mother cells, microspore mother cells to produce the microspores and megaspore mother cells to produce the megaspores. Because in uh, plants, the gamete production takes place by mitosis because the gametophyte is haploid. Therefore, in the given options, only the megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to produce the megaspores megaspore that is embryo sac, then microspore mother cell produces the microspore that is pollen grain. Therefore, here the answer is B. Next question, the plant part which consists of two generation, one within the other, germinated pollen grain. See germinated pollen grain where all the cells are haploid, gametes are haploid, gametes are haploid, therefore it is only gametophyte. Matured embryo sac, see in matured embryo sac, we have antipodals, two polar nucleus N plus N and XL N, cyanides N, it is mature, all haploid, therefore this cannot be the answer. Mature ovule, see in the mature ovule, we have integuments which are deployed, nucellus which is also deployed and it is having haploid embryo sac. Embryo sac is female gametophyte whereas nucellus and integuments belongs to sporophyte. So, mature ovule is a structure which has both sporophytic tissue that is integument and nucellus, gametophyte that is embryo sac. Therefore, mature ovule has a two generation that is both sporophytic a diploid and a gametophytic haploid generation and immature anther. So, immature anther will be having outer epidermis diploid endothesium deployed, middle layer deployed, tapetum 2N, 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 endopolyploidy. The immature will be having all sporogenous cells which are deployed and this entire thing is deployed. Therefore, immature anther is only sporophyte. But at maturity will be having haploid pollen grains. Then if the option is mature anther, both can be the answer. But here, the correct answer is mature ovule. Suppose in D, if there is a mature anther, both can be the answers, but for the given question, the correct answer is mature ovule because embryo sac is female gametophyte, whereas nucellus and integuments are sporophytes. Therefore, the answer is mature ovule. Chromosome number in which of the following cell is same as that of the meiocyte? See, meiocyte is always diploid. Antipodals are haploid, so wrong. Tapetal cells are 2n plus 2n plus 2n endo, so therefore, this is wrong endothesium is 2N, polar nucleus is haploid, therefore 2N, 2N, the answer is endothesium. Transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant is called. See here, a bisexual flower, the plant is bisexual, flowers are also bisexual, plant is bisexual. This is the male plant, flowers are also male staminate flowers. Female plant, pistillate flowers. You will find male flowers and also female flowers. 
this is called monoecious. When male and female plants different, it is called dioecious. A plant having male, female and also bisexual is polygamous. Transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower, another flower of the same plant. So, when the pollen grain transfer from pollen to the stigma of another flower of the same plant, this is possible in bisexual plant and also in monoecious plant. So, which is called as gaitanogamy. So, gaitanogamy is neighboring. Whereas, xenogamy, transfer of pollen from between the plants. Homogamy, within the flower where stamen and and uh, stamen and the piston mature at the same time, autogamy that is nothing but the pollination within the flower. Xenogamy, it is the between the flowers of the two genetically different plants. Gaitanogamy, between the flowers of the same plant. Homogamy within the flower, autogamy within the flower. Therefore, transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower, another flower of the stem plant, it is Gaitanogamy. Therefore, the answer is Gaitanogamy. Next question. Which of the following condition will be true if male and female flowers are present on different plants? See, this is male, here is female. This can be seen in day prom papaya. So, here when you have only male and only female plants, homogamy is not possible, gaitanogamy is not possible. The only possibility is xenogamy. Only autogamy is prevented. See, even gaitanogamy is also prevented. Only xenogamy is prevented. You cannot prevent xenogamy because xenogamy is possible. Both autonogamy is gaitanogamy is prevented. So, both autogamy and gaitanogamy is pre not possible. Both gaitanogamy and xenogamy are prevented. So, here the answer is both autogamy and gaitanogamy is prevented because autonogamy is not possible because they are unisexual plant. Gaitanogamy is also not possible because they are unisexual. Gaitanogamy are possible only when the plant is monoecious or bisexual. Therefore, the answer is C. Next question. Unisexuality of flowers prevent. When the flowers are unisexual, autogamy is not possible, but if it is monoecious, gaitanogamy is possible. Gaitanogamy is possible and xenogamy is also possible. They cannot prevent. So, this is possible. In autogamy, Unisexuality, autogamy is not possible, but gaitanogamy is possible. Gaitanogamy is possible, but xenogamy is also possible. Autonogamy, but not, you know, it can prevent autogamy, but not gaitanogamy. Therefore, the answer is D. Next question, heterozygosity. Heterozygosity is due to the pollination brought about by the genetically dissimilar plants, therefore it has to be xenogamy. Clistogamy, clistogamous flowers are those which do not bloom, which favors self-pollination. Autogamy, self-pollination, gaitanogamy. See, in autogamy, it is a pollination within the flower. Gaitanogamy, between the flowers of the same plant. Xenogamy, between the flowers of genetically dissimilar plant. Therefore, heterozygosity is possible in xenogamy. Next question, pollination by birds is called malacophily. Malacophily is pollination by snails, ornithophily, pollination by birds, chiropterophily, pollination by bats, myrmacophily, pollination by ants. In addition to this, anemophily, pollination by wind, not by animals, zoophily, pollination by animals. See, do not get confused between this. Anemophily by wind, zoophily by animals. Of course, all this comes under zoophily, but here pollination by birds is ornithophily. Therefore, the answer is B. Next question, which of the following feature is not found in wind pollinated flowers? Well exposed stamens is a characteristic of wind pollinated flower. Light and non-sticky pollen grain is also a characteristic of wind pollinated flower. Brightly colored showy petals is required for anemophilous flowers, that is insect pollinated, uh, sorry, sorry, not anemophilous, entomophilous flowers or insect, not for uh, anemophilous flowers. Pollen production is huge quantity, therefore, this character is not required for anemophilous or wind pollinated flowers, therefore, the option C. 
సార్ స్టాప్ వన్ నిమిషం నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ ఇన్ విచ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ పాలినేషన్ ఈజ్ ఓన్లీ ఆటోగామస్ సి జీనోగామి ఇట్ ఈస్ ద పాలినేషన్ బ్రాట్ అబౌట్ బిట్వీన్ జెనెటికలీ డిసిమిలర్ ప్లాంట్స్ చాస్మోగామి సో చాస్మోగామస్ ఫ్లవర్స్ ఆర్ దోస్ విచ్ బ్లూమ్ వే దే కెన్ గో ఫర్ బోత్ సెల్ఫ్ యాజ్ వెల్ యాజ్ క్రాస్ పాలినేషన్ దట్ ఈస్ బోత్ ఆటోగామి అండ్ అలోగామి క్లీస్టోగామి క్లీస్టోగామి ఇట్ ఈస్ ద కేస్ వేర్ ద ఫ్లవర్స్ డూ నాట్ బ్లూమ్ దేర్ ఫోర్ ఓన్లీ ఆటోగామి ఇస్ పాసిబుల్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద కాంట్రీవెన్స్ ఫార్ సెల్ఫ్ పాలినేషన్ అలోగామి ఇస్ అగైన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ద పాలినేషన్ బిట్వీన్ ద ఫ్లవర్స్ ఆఫ్ టూ జెనెటికలీ డిఫరెంట్ ప్లాంట్స్ దేర్ ఫోర్ ద ఆన్సర్ ఈస్ క్లీస్టోగామి నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ డివైస్ ఫార్ సెల్ఫ్ పాలినేషన్ ఈజ్ సో ఫర్ ద సెల్ఫ్ పాలినేషన్ టు అక్కర్ వీ కెన్ ఆల్సో కాల్ ఇట్ యాజ్ కాంట్రీవెన్సెస్ ఫార్ సెల్ఫ్ పాలినేషన్ ఆర్ యూ కెన్ ఆల్సో కాల్ ఇట్ యాజ్ ఇన్ బ్రీడింగ్ డివైజెస్ ఫర్ ఇన్ బ్రీడింగ్ ఆర్ సెల్ఫ్ పాలినేషన్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ద ఫ్లవర్ మస్ట్ బీ బై సెక్షుయల్ ఆర్ ద ఫ్లవర్ మస్ట్ బీ క్లీస్టోగామస్ క్లీస్టోగామస్ ఫ్లవర్ ఆర్ ద పాలినేషన్ మస్ట్ అక్కర్ ఇన్ ద బర్డ్ so bird pollination so when these are all the conditions then only the self pollination is flavored hercogamy where there is a barrier which prevent the pollination therefore they have to go for cross pollination here dicogamy is a condition where there is a difference in their maturity andrisham mature first which is called as protandry this can be seen in cotton and sunflower whereas protogyny which can be seen in mirabilis jalapa so here andrisham matures but the gynisham is not ready here gynisham matures but the andrisham is not ready therefore they have to go for cross pollination dicliny is bisexual condition in bisexual condition there are both the possibilities autogamy is also possible allogamy is also not possible only autogamy or self pollination is possible only in the condition of clistogamy therefore the answer is c clistogamy consider the genetic basis incompatibility which of the following option is correct male plant is s1 s3 so here all the gametes are s1 s3 so it is not very clear in the diagram whereas female plant is s1 and s2 so here the eggs are s1 and s2 in all the case see what is uh, incompatibility if the pollen grain from the same flower or the from the same plant falls on the stigma germination does not occur so in the first diagram it is s1 s2 s1 is germinated s1 cannot germinate because s1 s1 so there is incompatibility s1 cannot germinate s3 can germinate s1 and s2 germinate this is not possible in the second case both are not germinated see there are possibility where s3 can germinate therefore this is also not possible in third s1 germinate so this is also s1 this is also s1 same plant therefore in self incompatibility there is no germination therefore this is also not possible so here s3 is germinating here we have s1 and s2 s3 means it is from some other plant therefore only s3 germinates therefore the correct answer is the d next question match the plants in column 1 with the contrivances for cross pollination nothing but the outbreeding devices mentioned in the column 2 choose the correct option sunflower which i already mentioned sunflower we have protandry mirabilis jalapa protogyny in calatropis there is a barrier between the stamen and the pistil which prevents self pollination and favors cross pollination hercogamy so in primrose varied length of the stamen and the pistil heterostyly in potato it is self sterility not only in potato even in petunia and tobacco there is self sterility therefore if you go by this this the answer is the d next question both autogamy and gaitanogamy are prevented in see autogamy and gaitanogamy is prevented only when the plant is dioecious it is dioecious 
because if it is monoecious, gitanogamy is possible and even xenogamy is also possible. Suppose if the plant is bisexual, autogamy is also possible. Autogamy and gitanogamy both can be prevented only when the plant is dioecious like papaya, date palm. In papaya and date palm, they are dioecious plants, they can go for only xenogamy or allogamy, therefore the answer is papaya. Cucumber, monoecious, castor maize, in all these things, so xenogamy is possible, autogamy possible, therefore papaya is the right answer. Next question, which of the following statement is wrong? Unisexual producing flowers are also called dioecious plants, it is a correct statement. Homogamy and gaitanogamy do not occur in papaya. This is correct because the plant is dioecious. In dioecious plants only, only xenogamy possible, not homogamy or you can say autogamy and gaitanogamy. In castor and maize, gaitanogamy is prevented but not homogamy. So, this is a wrong statement. See, homogamy can be prevented, homogamy or autogamy is prevented but not gaitanogamy because these are monoecious. In monoecious plants, autogamy, see you can read it as autogamy, you can read this as autogamy that is pollination within the flower because they produce unisexual flowers, Monoecious, unisexual flowers but the plant is bisexual. Self sterility is seen in potato, tobacco and petunia which I discussed in the previous slide. Therefore, which of the following statement is wrong? So, this statement is wrong. He, you have to correct for me is in castor and maize, gaitanogamy is prevented but not homogamy. But here, homogamy is prevented but not gaitanogamy. Therefore, the correct option is C. Next question, the fertilization in which male gametes are carried through the pollen tube is known as, we have ovary, style, stigma, inside the ovary, ovule, with the embryo sac antipodals, polar nuclei and excel with the synergids. When the pollen grain falls here, we have generative cell, vegetative cell, exine. At some regions, there are no exine called germ pore, yet the intine develops into pollen tube. In the pollen tube, the vegetative cell nucleus disintegrates, the generative cell nucleus produces the two gametes. When the gametes are carried by that pollen tube, which passes through the style, then we use the term siphonogamy. So, siphonogamy use the term. Syngamy is the fusion of gametes. Syngamy is fusion of gametes. Porogamy, when the pollen tube enters through the micropylar region, we call it as porogamy. Shalazogamy, when it enters through the shalaza, we call it as shalazogamy. If it enters laterally through the integuments, we call it as mesogamy. See, siphonogamy, shalazo, this Porogamy and shalazogamy are the terms and even one more term that is mesogamy are the terms which are used based on the entry of the pollen tube into the ovule. Therefore, for this question, the correct answer is C that is siphonogamy where the gametes are carried by the pollen tube. Next question, double fertilization involves. See here we have a embryo sac, antipodals, two polar nucleus, XL, synergids. Pollen tube enters into the ovule with two male gametes. Synergids have filiform operators which direct the entry of the pollen tube. Two male gametes are liberated here. One of the male gamete fertilizes with the XL to form zygote called syngamy or generative fertilization. Before this, these two polar nuclei, they fuse together to form a diploid secondary nucleus, also called definitive nucleus and one male gamete, another male gamete fertilizes the secondary nucleus form a triploid primary endosperm nucleus which develops into the future nourishing tissue that is endosperm which is triploid and this is called vegetative fertilization and this is called triple fusion. 
So, formation of pen is due to triple fusion, formation of zygote is called as syngamy, syngamy and triple fusion, syngamy and triple fusion together constitutes double fertilization, but here the gametes are carried by single pollen tube, fertilization of egg by two male gametes, egg fertilized by just one gamete therefore, this is a wrong statement, fertilization of two eggs, we do not have two eggs therefore, wrong statement, fertilization of the egg and a central cell, this is a wrong statement, fertilization of the egg and the central cell by two sperms brought by this, here there is different pollen tubes, it is not a different pollen tube, it is the same pollen tube, therefore, the correct option is the D, fertilization of the egg and the central cell having the polar secondary nucleus or definitive nucleus by two sperms bought for the same pollen tube, therefore, answer D is correct. Next question, double fertilization involves, as I have explained, double fertilization one, the egg cell with one male gamete called syngamy, this is egg cell, this is male gamete, another one, a diploid secondary nucleus and a male gamete, it is called triple fusion to form a triploid primary endosperm nucleus, here to form a diploid zygote. This is called generative fertilization, this is called vegetative, pen develops into endosperm, zygote develops into future embryo. The fusion of gametes is called syngamy and triple fusion. So, the product of triple fusion is primary endosperm nucleus, the product of syngamy is zygote, therefore, the, this together constitute double fertilization, therefore, the answer is C. Karyogamy is the fusion of gametes, syncarion, fusion of the nucleus, syncarion is fusion of nucleus, carion means nucleus, syngamy, it is fusion of gametes, syncarpy, fusion of the carpel, syncarpus, therefore, the correct answer is the C. Next question, the genotype of the male angiosperm plant is A, male angiosperm plant. So, this is A, A diploid number and the genotype of the female plant is, so here in the embryo sac, we have B, therefore, haploid number B, 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 polar nuclei B, B, X, L, B, cyanar rigids B, that is haploid, but here the pollen grains are A. Then the genotype of the embryo, embryo is developed from the zygote, therefore, this is A B, it should be the embryo as it is developed from the zygote is A B. Endosperm, this is, so to this 2 B you have to add half, endosperm always carry the diploid number from female and haploid from the male, therefore, Diploid number is BB, haploid is A, BBA is endosperm, therefore, here first is embryo, embryo is AB, endosperm is BBA, therefore, the answer is C. Next question, when tetraploid flowering plant is pollinated by hexaploid, therefore, pollen grain is 6N, hexaploid, whereas female plant, this 4N, so, haploid number should be 2n, 2n, 2n. Of course, here secondary nucleus is 4n, XL is 2n, cyanide is 2n. Whereas, pollen are half of this 3n. So, you have to read the question properly. When tetraploid flowering plant is pollinated by hexaploid plant. So, this is tetraploid, female is tetraploid, male is hexaploid. So, half of this is 3n. Then the ploidy of the endosperm, endosperm 3n plus 4n, so this should be 7n and the embryo, embryo is 3n plus 2n, this should be 5n, therefore the answer is this. Suppose if you confuse and take this as 6n and this as 4n, then it will be 6 plus 2, 8n and 4 plus 3, it will be 7n. Therefore, your answer will be wrong. So, for the given question, the correct option is the B. Next question, which cell give rise to endosperm after fusion of with one of the two male gametes? As you know, the endosperm is formed by the central cell. 
we have antipodals, egg operators with egg cell and synergids. The central after you have a triploid pen, it is the one which gives rise to endosperm, zygote gives rise to embryo, therefore it is always the central cell. See in the matured embryo sac, you will find 8 cells, but sorry 7 cells, it is 7 celled, but 8 nucleated. So, this type of embryo sac is called as polygonum type of embryo sac that is 7 celled, 8 nucleated. Therefore, central cell is the one which give rise to the endosperm. Therefore, the answer is central cell having, having primary endosperm nucleus. Next question. Find out the ploidy of A, B, D and E. First, you have to see the diagram properly. Here, the cells are degenerating and this is the X cell. These two must be synergids. This should be the pen because as they are already disappearing, these are disintegrating antipodals. So, one of the synergids is damaged because of the entry of the pollen tube. So, synergids are always haploid. Here, X cell which is already fertilized, sorry. After fertilization, this should be zygote, therefore it should be 2n, pen is 3n, this should be here a. So, a is a synergid, it is haploid, it is zygote 2n, pen 3n, a degenerating n, therefore answer should be the b n, 2n, 3n and n. So, b is the answer. Next question, if the number of chromosomes in leaf cell of is 26. Leaf is always sporophyte. Sporophyte means 2n. 2n number is 26. Therefore, n number is 13. Next, would be the number of chromosomes in synergid. Synergid is haploid. Therefore, it should be 13. Microspore tetrad. Microspore tetrad includes 4 cells. So, therefore, n plus n plus n plus n. Therefore, 13 into 4 it will be 52. Next, definite nucleus. Definite nucleus is formed by the fusion of two polar nucleus. It will be 2n. Therefore, it should be again 26. Then, primary endosperm nucleus is 3n. So, 3n is 26 plus 13. It will be 39. So, it should be 13, 52, 26, 39. Therefore, in the given option, the answer is B. 13, 52, 26 and 39. Next question, identify the wrong statements regarding post fertilization changes in flowering plants. This question I already discussed even in the first chapter. The ovary wall develops into pericarp, correct, also called as fruit wall, correct. The outer integument of ovule develops into tegman. See, this is wrong. Outer integument develops into testa, inner integument, the tegman is developed from inner integument. Therefore, this statement is wrong. The triploid central cell develops into endosperm. I already discussed, correct. Ovule develops into seed, correct. Therefore, here the statement, wrong statement is B. The answer is B. Next question. How many meiotic divisions are involved in the formation of 20 seeds in angiosperm? See, for the formation of 20 seeds, you need 20 ovule or egg cell and 20 pollen grain. 20 XL or 20 female gametophyte are produced from 20 megaspore mother cell because each megaspore mother cell will produce only one XL or one embryo sac. But for 20 pollen grains can be produced from just 5 pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell because each pollen mother cell can produce 4 microspores. We need 20 microspores or 20 pollen grains. So, for 5 microspores, 5 meiosis. For 20 XL, 20 meiosis. Therefore, for the production of 20 seeds, totally there should be 25 meiosis. Therefore, the answer is 25. Next question. In figure, find out the coleoptile, shoot apex and epiblast. See, A is the cotyledon, single cotyledon, also called as scutellum. 
C B is a covering which can be called as the coleoptile. C is axis that is shoot apex, shoot apex. D is the epiblast. Epiblast is nothing but a rudimentary cotyledon which is not grown, a rudimentary cotyledon. Then here we have the coleoriza and all those things. Here we have to concentrate on the coleoptile. You got the answer. B is the coleoptile. Shoot apex C and epiblast D. So, B C D is the answer. So, B C D. So, look into these options also. Next question. Yeah, students, what I have observed is, say I have covered the questions in a sequence. I could cover the questions up to the formation of the embryo. So, you have to go through each and every sentence from your NCRT and you have to be very, very thorough. So, if you can prepare thoroughly for the NCRT book, each and every sentence, certainly you can do very well in both CET as well as NEET examination. So, I wish you all the best and a great success in your NEET and CET examination. Thank you.